Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a match between Shuttle and Larva here on Fighting Spirit. Top right hand corner, it is the White Zerg player Larva, and in the top left, it is the Orange Protoss player Shuttle under his well known Smurf name Eyewater. Which just means crying, literally translated from Korean, which somebody told me a while ago. I'm not sure who it was, but it's going to be a ZVP for your Patreon cast this week. If you're seeing this, the week of October the 15th, thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin for at least $1 a month. And if you're seeing this in November, welcome to the YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. All right. So, again, ZVP here between two incredible players. Larva. Shuttle, shuttle, 200 APM. Larva, 530 APM. That is Zerg versus Protoss in a nutshell. You don't need very much APM to play Protoss, but you do need need to know how to wall off, what compositions to do. Your units are kind of slow, so you have to deal with that. You know how to map position. And there we go. This is a nine pool here from Larva. No big deal. <laughs> well, non over pool. It's an over pool, not a direct nine pool, and the probe is scouting the wrong way. But that's just fine. He's gonna throw it on a forge here just to be safe, just in case it was an earlier than nine pool. But nine pools are scary in and among them, in and of themselves. And the drone here is gonna go ahead and do a twelve hatch. Maybe 11 hatch? I don't know that it really matters all that much at this stage of the game. But yeah, that's going to be an 11 hatch Rooney. And the pool's almost done. And we're going to have Lings out. And we're going to try to find where on earth this Protoss player could be. And the answer is just top left, man. No big deal. No problems here for anyone. Just top left. Nexus coming in. And a cannon. Because he knows. He knows now. It was definitely a pool first style of a play. So there are definitely lings in production. How many? Looks like just two for now. Could be another set in that egg, but not entirely certain. So one cannon should be enough. Another cannon, probably overkill. But at the same time, you don't know how many more lings are coming out here. And these guys are chasing you away pretty good. You're trying to keep an eye on how many more lings could possibly be on the way. But it could be a ling flood. And... One cannon and a gateway should be enough to hold this thing. Probably going to pull a couple probes down here just to make sure if it's more than two or four or six Urglings, you can hold it. But yeah, this thing shows up. And this thing actually really wants to kill this probe because the scouting purposes and potential of this probe are pretty high. Going to try to see, are we, what are we doing? We're getting speed. We have our gas now, yes indeed. And actually, there we go, low ground, taking the third base down to the bottom right expansion location. Exactly how you do it. Against Protoss, you take your third low ground here on Fighting Spirit, you high ground it against Terran here on Fighting Spirit, and you're good to go. So there's your gateway. Shuttle's gonna be left alone for the most part, doing a bit of a Maynard transfer down here to the natural base. And a lair, are we skipping speed here? We're skipping speed, man. He has no intention of getting speedlings today. He really wants that 100 gas to go for a lair instead. He knows how fast Shuttle is moving towards getting Corsairs. And the faster he gets a Spire out, the faster he can try to shut that down, or at the very least defend against the Corsairs that are coming to try to murder him. So yeah, speed's later. There you go, speed on the way. After the lair upgrade. No problemo whatsoever. So yeah, if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Hit that like button. I do a kind of a mix of older Brood War games and newer ones. I actually have a supply of newer games from players like Light, uh, players like Ample, players like Beast, some of the newer names out there in the uh, in the organization of professional Star or Starcraft Brood War. So if there's a 2020 in the title or a 2019 in the title, you know it's a more recent replay. And if there's not any such thing, I don't know when the replay is from exactly. It could be anywhere from about 2008 to 2000 and like today. Uh, this, I think, is 2012, but I really don't have a way to prove that. So, Zealot out, actually. Going to force some more Lings out from our Zerg player. He doesn't like that. He'd really rather not make any Zerglings at all from this point on. <laughs> Just two. Two's enough for him, but he's forced to make more. Stargate coming up. 
and that spire timing is pretty good pretty on point here for larva apm still hovering around 460 it's shuffled up to 300 for shuttle as he has more stuff to do he's not really a spammer citadel of a dune coming in this could just be a straight dt corsair style play but you have to imagine that larva's seen this a billion times right make sure you get a couple hydras out maybe use the scourge Scour to kill the corsairs and then well the dark templar aren't really a problem after that are they Ling's dancing about. She's like, you made me make some more Zerglings. I don't like it. I'm going to try to break your face. Oh, or this could just be a speed lot plus one attack. I think that's what it is. It's Corsair Zealot. Based on the Zealot count, based on the fact we're getting plus one, this has got to be, yep, immediately going for legs for Zealots. Okay, so this is going to be a plus one Zealot Corsair style attack. And this is where Larva has to defend. We haven't had a really standard ZVP in some time. Yeah, so this is to defend either this third base or the natural base. He doesn't know where the Zealots are going to come. So you have to protect both of them. It's going to be Sunkins. It's going to be maybe a couple Hydras back behind the way. I would not be shocked to see a Hydralisk Den coming up soon now that they're already Scourge in production. Actually, hold your horses. Uh, yes, they're already Scourge out. Sorry about that. They are hunting. Indeed. So this is probably going to be a Sunken. You want to wall off with Evolution Chambers, maybe Macro Hatches, which is what we're seeing here at the third base. Already getting those up, because he knows. He knows the Zealots are going to be moving soon. There's four of them already. There's another one on the way. It's not a humongous 12, 15, you know, 20 Zealot attack yet. If it is four, five, or six, you really only need the one Sunken and maybe a couple Hydralisks. But you know what we're not doing is getting a Hydralisk Den. So this is a little bit interesting. I won't be shocked to see one of these guys become a Hydralisk Den. Evolution Chamber. Again, walling off the Sunken. That's very, very important. Now there's the Hydra Den. Okay. So we're getting them, because you don't need the hiders if it's just five or six zealots, but if there are more, definitely more hiders are going to be good. So here they come, and the links actually get inside a little bit, but the cannon shoves them back away, and they recognize they will be needed. Uh, this creep, yes, we decide to attack this one, shuttle does, and the creep colony going to go down. Pretty good. Drones here fighting, just trying to keep these zealots in the general vicinity of the sunken for as long as he can, and one of them does go down. The other four are in varying stages of death, which is going to make it a little bit easier for these Zerglings to kill them all. Uh, again, make it a little bit easier for them to do that, and they're all going to die. So that was held. It's a little touch and go there for a second. But all the Zealots are dead, and lost a creep colony, and maybe a couple Zerglings, and overall I think that was a fair trade. Yeah, see? That's the trick, man. They can come out at any time. If that had been a later attack with more Zealots, then you want Hydras. You want Hydras behind these Sunkins to pick them off from distance and stay behind the wall as much as you can because Zealot attacks, especially with plus one, will crush Hydralisks. Hydras don't want to get touched at all by anything, but especially Zealots with their Psy Blades. All right, so just going to be Hydras, man. It's going to be speed upgrade for Hydras. There's a Spore here, too, in case a Corsair shows up, but uh, the Corsairs must have been picked off. I don't see them anywhere. Uh, I must have been paying attention to something else at the time. Usually they like to stay here next to this cannon, but the Scourge must have got him. And we don't see further Corsair production at all. So it's just going to be ground army from this point on. Bunch of Dragoons moving out with that plus one attack. And a Lurker Aspect coming in. Going to be good for the Zealots. Not going to be good versus this many Dragoons. And here's the attack. This is what you can do if you don't have a lot of Corsairs you're continuing to produce is have a bigger Dragoon army here. This is pretty intimidating, to be honest. I mean, if they could take down that macro hatch. That's a fair trade. The Zealots really need to help with this thing. But from distance, yeah, the Zealots need to cover the Dragoons because the Dragoons can handle these Sunkins, especially with plus one attack. Look how fast that one goes down. That one goes down. And as long as the Lings are dead, then the Dragoons are going to have a better time with this. Another Sunken down, but another Sunken pops just in the nick of time. More Lings desperately coming in. This is, I mean, isn't enough links? It's enough links to actually take down these here Dragoons. They don't have any upgrades at all, but other than Metabolic Boost, and the Micro here is pretty fantastic. Oh, uh, that's an 8-kill Dragoon. That's a 3-kill Dragoon. That's a 4-kill Dragoon. More Zealots getting stuffed on only one Sunken to kill them. The drones do have to fight for their own little Droney lives here until the links can come back and help out. But yeah, man, they're getting some stuff done. One kill on that Zealot, four kills on that Zealot. Three kills on that Zealot. The Zealot Micro here is kind of nuts. The Drone Micro, very good for Larva, too. And finally, the Zealots die again, but it's only 40 drones here. The pressure's been insane out of Shuttle. That's why we like this guy. 
That's why we love Shuttle. It's for that very reason. It's because he's so good. Constant pressure. Getting damn upgrades. Good micro. He knows what he's doing and he always has. Two sunkins in really well walled off positions here. Gonna really have to do the majority of the damage to these zealots. Lings are doing what they can, but plus one zealots, man, do pretty well against them lings. That guy abandons post. These guys try to take the sunken down. Can't do it. And this dude with three kills makes it in and sees... No oh, gets the scout. Sees no hive. Sees no queen's nest. He's got nine HP. But he got a nice scout off. So much pressure! This is so much two-base pressure here. This is nuts out of shuttle. Wow, huge drone. Just drone makeage there out of larva. Makes 55 drones. Well, I mean, went from like 40 to 55 real fast. And it's paid off for him. I mean, he's got the four bases rolling here. He's pretty happy, I gotta say, about his position. Four base to two base is a nice place to be. Third base only now getting started from shuttle. Zealots moving into the third base now. This is why you get, again, gotta have the same setup at your third base. Oh, no, that's not a wall. That's not a wall. Oh, no, the Zealots are getting on top of the Sunkins. They're doing so well against the Sunkins with our plus one attacks here. One Sunken down, two Sunkins down, a third Sunken. Maybe going to die here. A fourth Sunken, quite possibly, too. So many Zealots are here, and it's only Zergling. He hasn't, Larva hasn't had time to make the lurkers that he needs to really survive against this kind of an assault, but he finally has enough links here with plus one armor to clear it out. <laughs> Ten drones have died since the last time I checked, or perhaps just been turned into buildings. Maybe macro hatches. I don't know. I love the two macro hatches here at the fourth base. I love the macro hatch at the third, the one at the natural. I mean, this is macro hatch heaven right now. So we're going to try to see, let's see, did Shuttle expand? Did he expand down the left side at the nine o'clock? No. So he's going to be at the 12 o'clock instead. Jumping on this like now would be insanely good for these lings. Before these other two cannons come up, they can take this. I guess there are zealots in the way, so never mind. And we're going to make mutos because guess who's not making Corsairs anymore? Yeah, that's right. It's Shuttle. Oh my gosh. He just bypassed the zealots because they can fly. And suddenly the Muta Tech Switch really catching everyone by surprise. I wasn't watching the production tab closely enough. The Muta, look at this Muta count. That's eight Mutas, man. They can take down a cannon just like that. We're going to Muta Ling here today, which is why the Archon exists. Archon Zealot is actually disgustingly good against Zerglings. Dragoons are here to try to do some stuff. A Corsair pops out with another one on the way because, you know what, if your opponent's going Mutalisks, you got to start making those Corsairs is what you got to do. Still alive, every one of those Mutas, but there we go. <laughs> All of them very close to dead, and one hit from a Corsair or an Archon takes it down. This is a disgustingly good match. I mean, this might very well get an epic tag based on the first 13 minutes alone. Yeah, look at these mutas. No, we're not healthy. Got 10 HP on this one. Yeah, more Corsairs, more Corsairs all the time. The plus two Archons are pretty scary. The third base is alive, but for how much longer? Probe's getting focused down. The mutas do have a Carapace upgrade, but it doesn't help against Archons all that much. Is he trying to muta micro against Archons? Oh, okay, now a Corsair shows up. You gotta get out. Oh, there's another one down. Six, though. Six Mutas. He's not going Mass Muta. He's definitely dumping a lot of money into Lurkers right now. And what he really needs to do is get some Dark Swarm. Because them Lurkers are not going to do much versus the Archons or the Dragoons. If they show up in numbers here. If you don't have any Dark Swarm. I mean, the Archons are going to be good anyway. But you can't shut down the Dragoon damage for sure. I, I don't see these Lings accomplishing a whole lot. High Templar in the mix. I believe Storm got researched some time ago. We haven't seen a Storm yet. But uh, it's definitely in the in the spell book. <laughs> in the ability book here. For Shuttle today. That has 11 Mutas. Man, he's kind of a little bit... Oh my gosh, the Mutas though. Oh, actually surprisingly healthy considering how much Corsair damage they took there. This stacking Muta stuff is... Sick. It is sick out of shuttle. That cannon dead. This Corsair dead. Oh, it ran away. It's alive. Never mind. The Mutas do it again better for themselves than I thought they would. 
Larva is really buying a ton of time here with these Mutalisks. He hasn't expanded in some time, which I feel like he should. With all the pressure that he's putting on, maybe just take this space. I mean, it's close to everything else. Easily reinforced. Corsair's in the mix because the Corsair count is getting a bit heavier. Plus three attack is on the way here for shuttle. There's your hive. Okay, so hive coming up. We saw the queen's nest in the production tab a second ago. And it is down here at the fourth. Splitting up your tech structures is always nice because there's always the chance that the, uh, the Protoss army will come up and murder you in the face. So, all right, now he's got Scourge support. So now he's like, bring it, Corsairs. I'll take you down. The problem here are most of the Dragoons, though. Mostly the Dragoons. Zealot trying to make sure there's not a fifth base coming up, but he lost the ability to see that information anymore. And he's seeing there are no other bases for shuttle, so he's got to feel pretty good about this at 16 minutes. He's at 151 supply. He's down in supply at 16 minutes, but he's got map control at this stage, right? It's really, really hard for shuttle to move out without Muta's jumping on top of him and killing all his stuff. So he's buying time. Shuttle's taking the opportunity to just throw up a fourth base at that 9 o'clock position. And there we go. 3 o'clock getting up at the exact same time for Larva. Adreno glands coming in. Numatized carapace on Zive. Shuttles with High Templar indicates probably storm drops are in the future here for a larva. Can he handle it? And do we have a defiler mound? I'm just realizing. Did he, he didn't go to Hive and knock it a defiler mound, did he? It's entirely possible. It is 100% possible because he's not getting consumed, which is usually the very, very, very first thing you do once that defiler mound is done and gets get, get consumed. Oh, there it is. Getting started now at 17 minutes. There it is. Okay, so... Hmm, seems late, but hey. Larva is the professional player here, not me. Man, hit that like button if you're enjoying this. Too few of you guys hit the like button. I'm just going to call you out right now. Like The number of people that are going to watch this and the number of people that are just going to click like is ridiculously low like less than 10 percent of you will bother to do it so help me out with the algorithm guys the algorithm loves when people like the videos and comments especially so leave me a comment i'll read it if you've ever wanted to get your comment read by someone who has a youtube channel that you enjoy well this is a good place to do it oh the zealots almost held that they almost held the southern ramp, and no, not allowed. Cannon's easily going down to these links with adrenal glands, even if they only have plus one attack. That's some brutal stuff, and this is exactly what Larva's been doing. He's been controlling the map. Just making sure that, no, Shuttle has big, scary, ginormous, terrifying army, but he can't move out because the links and the Mutas will sneak in the back door and murder all of his stuff. So he's bought all this time. Another expansion here for Larva. That is going to be his fifth. So five bases for the Zerg and four bases for... No, sixth, rather. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sixth. Counting is hard. And here we are. We're going to go Ling Lurker Hydra. The storm is going to be the saving grace. If there was no storm, shuttle would be dead right now. The storms are so good on those Hydras. The Dragoons are the answer to these Lurkers without the Dark Swarm, which we don't have yet because Consume's not done. Trying to mash at the front door here against Reavers. Yeah, I don't, I don't recommend this particular course of action. Storm Reaver against Hydra is really, <laughs> really good. Okay, fine. They might actually get a gateway. That'd be interesting. And they don't. They decide to hold off instead. So this army, the Reavers and the High Templar are here to deal with the natural base. God, that's a lot of storm. Look at how many High Templar there are here. Larva's got to be feeling like, okay, eventually we're going to run out of storm, right? And the answer is yes, especially because these two, well, these four High Templar turned into Archons. Definitely the case. This Lurker does get the gateway eventually. No bonus damage versus buildings, but, you know, damage is damage, and you'll get there even without the bonus. 
Lurkers burrowing in. They know they're going to get stormed as soon as they burrow because they're stationary targets. But any damage you can get to your snipe in the High Templar, we can hear that sound. And suddenly, this army's in a lot of trouble. I mean, it's 145 to 117 supply. And by in a lot of trouble, I mean this High Templar has got eight kills and assisted on like a hundred other kills there. It's a nine kill Dragoon. Not bad. Dude, that High Templar should be dead. That Hydra should have snuck, like chased it down and assassinated it. But no, that's not what happened at all. So it says, bad news. Sick, the 12 o'clock base. Larva has it now. Did he miss with that storm? He missed with the first one. Had to do another storm to kill it. I mean, he could have just run in there with any... He's got detection. It's not like he had to storm it to kill it. It was going to die anyway. What are these overlords? I guess in case there's Dark Templar? I don't know. This game is good. This is a really, really fun match. I hope you're enjoying it. Because this has been... Man, 20 minutes of just all over the place awesomeness 176 to 141 total supply the protoss player is up and looking good plague on the way plague we'll see some of that for sure these overlords that are on the side of the map for reasons i don't understand are finally dying plus three attack done on the dragoons working on shield upgrades which benefits everybody under the sun the protoss and all their buildings Oh, for a second there, he was researching uh, Overlord's Sight Range, which he immediately canceled. I don't know what key combination he pressed to get that by accident. Because he didn't start up another Spire upgrade. He started another... Like, he started building stuff instead. Link's check to make sure what we're dealing with, which is a bunch of cannons and a Reaver. This is so many Archons. Like... This has really got to be when you just start making a million Hydralisks. You can't... Hey, Reaver drops. Sure, why not? Reaver drops at the 6 o'clock. God, big time hits. And the shuttle gets out of there. You know why shuttle calls himself shuttle? Because he loves him, this shuttle. And all shuttles are precious to him. Yeah, this is a really terrifying position. Oh, that lurker comes out of the egg. Regains all its health because it finished morphing in. This pressure makes this possible, right? We can take this base here because of the pressure at the 12 o'clock. Which, it's the death composition. It just is. Reaver, High Templar, Dragoon, Archon. It's like, okay, Hydras get wrecked by the Storm and the Dragoon, or the Storm, rather, and the Reavers. Lings can't do a lot against the Storm or the Reavers. Mutalisks are going to die to the Mass Archon and the Dragoons. Guardians are going to die to the Dragoons and to the Storm. You really can't do Ultras that much because of the Reavers, but what I've seen work is a lot of Ultras. Like, yes, you're going to lose Ultralisks, but if you can catch this group out, especially if you can kill the Reavers fast, the rest of it Ultras can take down fairly nicely. If you have a humongous giant number of it. Hey, remember what I said about shuttles and how much shuttle loves them? Yes, you should. I mean, sure. Random storm attempt. Killed some lings that were coming to kill them. They died. It's whatever. It's whatever it is. Yeah, if this turns into a split in half map situation, that's not good for Larva at all. He, uh, yeah, really, if Shuttle gets this base, which he's going to, we're split in half. And economically, that's not where you want to be. The Zerg player can win there. It's not impossible, but it's not great. Ooh, these lings are hiding. They can get this Nexus if they're thinking about it. I know Larva's attention is like trying not to die to this push right now. I understand that, but man, look at these Lurkers just die. Oh, the Hydra's backing them up. I mean, helps them get extra stuff done, but still. And this is where the storm comes in. It's just, you have enough Hydras remaining after the storm happens. There's your Plague! Ooh, first one of the day. 
feel like we should have been seeing them more before now, but it's cool, I guess. Dude, these lings can cancel this. Ne oh, I guess there's three zealots now. Never mind. The numbers do not favor the zergling. There's a greater spire coming in. Oh, lings got some shots off on that reaver. No, the archons are just like, bring it. The reavers, as long as the reavers aren't taking hits, we can... Archons will take hits all day, even as that guy ends up dead. Oh, Defiler wanders in, causes two, casts two Dark Swarm, like, immediately went after the other. Which, I don't know. Is that enough? It's 182 to 146 supply. This is just, uh... <laughs> this is a 25-minute game in which the map is cut in half. Officially now, 66 to 57 workers. See, the links came in too late, man. There was a window. There was a window where there was a warping in Nexus. There were no zealots here. You could have at least canceled the Nexus once. Would have been nice. Hey, Dermaelstrom on the way. Excellent. Do we actually have any Dark Archons yet? We're just getting Maelstrom in perhaps anticipation of making some later. Are there any Dark Archons? Or rather, Dark Templar on the field? I don't know. Look how he's setting up in here. He's like, Larva's not taking this base. I will live here for as long as necessary. I love how the Archon looks in the remaster. They're so cool. I think they're the best looking unit in the remaster, honestly. Larva decides it's time to go again. Just purling Hydra, desperately trying to catch these Reavers, but the Shuttle Micro from Shuttle. Shuttle says, don't you know better than to challenge the Shuttle Ma- Oh. <laughs> the Shuttle Master, who lost his Shuttle due to a bit of a misclick there, I assume. I think there were two Reavers in there as well. All right, so he's making some Guardians. They are somewhere here. Ah, the Guardians are shutting down mining at this base, but this is what the High Templar lives for. You ready for this? And see, it's not enough to one-shot the Guardians, but the Guardians are dumb enough to where they float into range of cannons that they will finish themselves off in that situation. It's so dumb. All right, will this be a game wherein Guardians help win the game? And maybe survive even possibly to the end of the game. I, why did those Scourge do that? Scourge, why'd you fly over those cannons? I don't know. This is a actually fairly big commitment to Guardians at the moment. Dude, get that High Templar. That High Templar is going to be a problem for you. This is not very directed fire, but also he wants to make sure they're split up enough so that one storm can't kill all of them. That's kind of a bigger deal. So there is a Dark Archon. No, not enough energy for anything right now. And this is the unload, this is the storm, this is the, sp like, splits. This is the Guardian split scenario. So High Templar dies, kills a couple Guardians in the meantime. This army, this mess, Archon Storm Army is just problematic. Hey, look, more dead Guardians. Dude, this game has Guardians and Dark Archons in it. It's getting an epic tag. It's like I just want to finish off the Nexus, and this group of three Guardians can do it. So long as, you know, they actually target fire the thing. Hey, attack up north into a storm cannon situation. No, backing on out. Okay, get the... Dude, get the Nexus. Please, get... Okay, got it. Nexus down. That's a big, big, big situation. Ugh. Guardian's very injured, but not dead. Because, again, it's more than one storm to kill them. It's like the saving grace of Guardians is that it takes more than one psionic storm to murder them. That's the only reason that they're tier 3, is they have 150 HP, which is not a whole ton, but it's like the second most HP in the game behind the Ultra Disc for Zerg. Now the good news here for Larva is he hasn't lost a base yet, and he's killed a Protoss base. So that bare, very, very basic math indicates he's in a good way. He's defended exceptionally well. Zergling's making a bit of a counterattack attempt, gonna run into a million Zealots with 3-2-1 upgrades. Three attack, two armor, one shields. Hydra is just trying to kite as well as they can. The lurkers are trying to just hold it. Observer snipe, double observer snipe means the lurker is doing more than they otherwise should have. This army has to pull back. This army did not want to pull back. This army did not have to pull back, but the double observer snipe means yes, they did. Replacing the fifth base down here and actually making scouts. We're getting scouts in this game. 
I mean, he's like, Larva committed so much to Guardians. We're going to make a scout. I don't know where it went. This might be a Maelstrom. Oh, he uses energy on something. Dude, this is... This is so much Storm, but also it's so many Hydralisks. Like, this is Zerg, man. This is... You are endless. You are numerically infinite. You can storm all you want, but they're just going to keep coming. That is the Zerg. That is the intent. That is how they are supposed to be played. Double Reaver. Problematic for those lurkers. This is uh, like a dark swarm here would be nuts. Ready for it, Defiler? I mean, okay, that's a decent place for it. But dude, if Larva takes out this base... I think he wins this game. It's one base of income at that situation. For Shuttle, I mean, sure, it's only one base for Larva, too, but... That is a storm dodge before the storm hit. I mean, that is... He saw the High Templar coming. Defiler died, I think, to a Reaver shot. And look at this. The whole army has to be up here try to handle this. Coming up a ramp as an Archon versus 3-3 three, three Hydras is not a good time. Storming them is great. Oh, we got a Plague on the Photon Cannons. Alright. Ooh, High Templar Snipe. So all the Hydras are dead, but High Templar died. There's a Plague here, and this base is toast. <laughs> Muta's trying to snipe that Nexus, catching a Storm and being forced to retreat from that position. I don't know. Like, if you're Larvae, do you try to take the center at this point? You might very well need to. Hey, look who's got more Guardians. Where'd that scout go? We saw it. And this position is so good. The only thing that can hit you are air units. Oh, hang on. The Archons can hit you if they have detection available. And there's just the storms today. So, so many psionic storms. They have upgrades. I think they have armor. You got one armor upgrade. Is it his hold positioning a little bit here? I think he also wants to try to take down the Nexus if he can, but the Dragoons are just... They hit so hard! There's 26 damage per shot here. These Mutas are... My gosh, the Mutas, though. Very daring raid on that shuttle, trying to take it down. 181 to 181 supply at 32 minutes. This is getting an epic tag. This has been one of the more fun games I've ever cast in StarCraft Brood War. The High Templar snipes are pretty sick. I think he missed with that last one, but that's okay. <laughs> how? Larva's like, how are there so many storms? I keep killing High Templar. That was literally... Nope, there's one up there too. Are you serious? There's one there as well. Storm good unit, man. I mean, just picking off individual probes is probably fine. A lot of alliteration there. Alright, how's the ground army? Not super great, actually. So let's bring in a whole bunch of 3 2 adrenalings. You make them use the storm here. Oh, there's your Maelstrom storm combo. Wombo combo. The guardians are like, hey, you know what? There's not much stopping us from doing this anymore. And this base is going to die again. The Dark Archon explodes with an expl just BAM of a sound there. That is a dead Nexus. It, no matter what happens after this. Hold on. By that. Oh, the High Templar snipe. That was so good. That Hydra has like one kill, but the High Templar snipe was great. Those High Templars get sniped as well. Get the Nexus. I mean, helping against the Archons is really, really nice. That pre-move against the Storm was sick. Oh, not that one. Not as good. Not as good, friends. Archon down. Guardian damage. It's still 20 damage per hit from a decent range. And the Nexus goes down again. There's nobody left on the ground to try to kill this base. Can Larva get in there and do it? He's up 155 to 126 supply. Ugh, the Archon's doing splash damage against the Guardians is such a problem. But if they're dealing with the Guardians, they're not doing as well against the Lings. And this might be enough to kill this bottom left-hand base. Reinforcing Zealots are trying to help here. But you know what's not good against Guardians is Zealots. Pro-tip Arama. 
122 supply here for Shuttle. I think he's just bleeding out. I think losing that base was humongous. Oh, the DTs in the mix are genius. You can hear them, but you can't see them. There are no overlords in the general vicinity. I guess these are your closest ones. But they're not here, nor are they heading this direction at all. Is the Oh, my gosh. The complete lack of detection saves this bottom left hand base, but for how long? Look at how many lings there are. How much storm is at this base? A lot, actually. He just shuttled in a bunch of High Templar. Dude, these Guardians are making themselves extremely useful in this game. I don't know what's happening right now. Overlord shows up. The Dark Templar are having a bad time. It's abject chaos. Down here in the bottom left, the storms are so good. The storms are so good. <laughs> uh, combined, they have like 24 kills. The Guardians. Two Guardians remaining. Trying to pick off the cannons very slowly. Reinforcing Zealots and Archons coming this way. Both players starving in some way. Only 78 minerals for Larva. Only 200 gas for Shuttle. Another storm comes up. Finishes off that Guardian. This Guardian with 11 kills is still alive. This Archon has 16 kills. Taking the kills from his High Templar predecessors. And that Guardian is down. And reinforcing High Templars show up. Dude, what is even happening right now? Guess who's shuttling in more High Templar? How do you beat Zerg? Mass High Templar, it turns out. Muta's showing up. Don't... No. Oh, gosh. Get the splash. The splash. <laughs> is problematic. More Guardians. Are we even... He's making more Guardians. I assume that scout died to Scourge or something embarrassing. I mean, I don't want to... I want to rewind and try to figure out what happened to it. Maybe. Dude. That is like the 178th storm that's been cast today. It really is. Nice play. Ooh, catching a lot of those zealots. And suddenly it's 149 to 94 supply. Suddenly shuttles ahead. I thought Larva had that game, but this push is looking really intimidating. The plague's going to help a lot in killing these zealots especially. And once they're gone, it's easier to take down the Archons as we see. Two go down there very quickly. This base is getting destroyed. And Larva taps out Shuttle <laughs> is your winner in 37 minutes and 55 seconds. Ah, uh, Larva, friend. I thought you had that. I did. I... Uh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's an epic tag. That was that shuttle came back from that position and won that game is nothing short of insanity. Gosu, 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 Gosu game there from Shuttle. He lost this base a bunch of times. But he never ever lost this base. Kept shuttling in more high Templar and more high Templar to hold everything that got thrown at him by Larva. It's the fact that... Wait, is this space... This space wasn't dead. No. No, 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 no. No. Okay, no. Why were there drones running around? The Guardian's trying to do stuff, but there's a million infinite storm... Where are they? Are they lo they're long distance mining from this? Oh, holy smokes. He didn't feel comfortable taking it. No, he did. He tried. 
He tried taking it, but then it was 149 to 90 supply. There was too much Protoss. The Zealots all died, but the Archons and the Dragoons... I don't know. Is that a premature quit? It's just... It's the more Storm. I think he just got sick of being stormed in the face over and over and over again. I think that's all it was. Dang. I, I don't know what else to say about that. That was a fantastically wonderful, wonderful ZVP. One of the best ones I've ever cast. I, I thought Larva had that. I... <laughs> uh... Storm, storm, good unit, and um, yeah, guardians. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the resources would have been better spent on ultras. I, I personally really do. It takes more than two storms to kill an ultra lisk. They trade really well against dragoons. They can do, hold their own against archons. Zealots are a bit of a problem, but if you have you know lings and. Especially plague on top of those zealots, it makes them chewier and easier to kill. I know there were a lot of reavers, but not that many reavers. I don't know. It's all about it's all about the game of chess. You know what you make versus what your opponent makes. If there were more ultras, there probably would have been more sh uh, reavers produced, and that's how it goes. Three hundred and ninety-eight thousand points for shuttle in that game. Three hundred and seventy-four for larva. A 1,000 to 300 kill-death ratio there for Shuttle. That is the power of Storm. Structures raised, 40 Protoss buildings killed is a lot of Protoss buildings killed. And considering especially the fact that Shuttle never killed a base, he never killed a Larva base today, and he won anyway, that's so hard to do. That is so hard to do. Total spent is still 15,000 more for the Zerg player. But when you go back to the units tab, this was it. 1,053 Zerg units died. 282 Protoss units died. And that's how the game was won. Bananas. Bananas game. All right. Well, I can't. I can't gush about this game anymore, but that's going to be it for me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.